Well, good evening. Wonky Astronomer here. Well, tonight I'm driving up to Ilford in uh, New South Wales. It's about uh, an hour and a half drive from where I live. And uh, I'm joining a team of occultation observers tonight. Oh, yeah, I'm 57 kilometres from Ilford. I believe there's uh, four guys uh, going up tonight to Ilford to observe two lunar greys occultations. A lunar greys is where the moon passes by a star and, and the edge of the moon just scrapes by the star. And what happens is because the moon is not it's not flat, you know, it's, not, it's not a perfect sphere, it's got mountains and valleys and stuff, um, the star will be hidden by the mountains and then it may reappear between the mountains and the valleys. So the result of this is that you see the star turn uh, flicker off and on, perhaps several times during the event. So what we plan to do is to have uh, four observers spaced out along the highway in a north-south uh, line. And by observing uh, at four different locations, what we get is essentially we get four cross sections of those mountains on the edge of the moon. And by timing the disappearances and reappearances of the star very accurately, we can essentially uh, map the, the shape of those mountains. Well, I've arrived at the meeting place and uh, the guys are here. We've got our cars here a line and we've uh, just decided which sites we're going to observe from. I'm going to be at the furthest one north. That's the deepest one. I'll be looking at the deep valleys. Okay. All right, shall we go? Yeah, we're going to hit the road. All right, so I'll follow you. Yep. Well, we've now uh, dispersed along the highway at uh, four separate sites. And uh, it's not quite dark yet, as you can see in the west. Still a little bit of light there. The moon is up there. Up there. There it is. Trust me, I'm an astronomer. Yeah, over there, there's a gate. But it's a, a disused gate. So, you know, I parked my car here, right in front of this gate, which is sort of uh, in a little dirt driveway off the road. You know, I was worried actually I'd be blocking someone's driveway, but. Uh, you can, you can tell this this driveway hasn't been used for years. It's all overgrown. A little noisy when the cars go past. I'm setting up my telescope there. Yeah, the ground's a bit rough, but it's not bad. Well, normally for these occultations, uh, for timing, I've been using an iPhone application, which uses an NTP time server, which is pretty accurate. But the best way is to use a GPS clock. And uh, Dave had a spare one, so he lent it to me. It's a car going past. Uh, so this is it here. That's showing universal time. And if I turn on the beeper, so that, that beeps once every second. So that sound will be recorded onto my audio recording. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press the position button on the back and it'll tell me the GPS coordinates of this location. And I'll need that for uh, later when I report the observation. Press the button. There it is, position. 32 degrees 57 minutes, 0.1035. And 149 degrees 51 minutes point five five two eight east and then there's some other stuff well, that's altitude 812.2 meters so it's now 943 uh, universal time and uh, we've got about mm, eight or nine minutes before I I need to start looking through the telescope and watching to see if the star disappears, or at what times it disappears. So uh, I'm going to get ready now. 
This is a video recording of the first of the two grazers. And over here you can see the bright part of the moon. Over here you can see the dark part of the moon. And up here is the star, which is just about to be covered by the moon as it moves in this direction. So let's watch and listen to the audio that I recorded as I watched the event through my telescope. Go on. Well, you could hear me call Gone there as the star disappeared, and you can even hear Dave calling Gone as well, even though he was uh, about 140 metres down the road. This video was recorded by Dave, and he's kindly allowed me to use it. As you can see down in the uh, bottom corner there is the GPS timestamp, which is inserted by a, a GPS clock, so it's a very accurate time. And Dave can use that to determine the times of the events very accurately. Now let's... Uh, Watch as the star reappears. Back. And as it disappears again. Gone. As you can see, there can be quite a difference between the time of an event as seen by me and by Dave. And that's just because of our different locations along the road. Well, the grazing occultations have ended. I'll turn off the beeper box now. Hang on. Yeah, the first event, um, first graze, I think I had three disappearances. Um, and the second one, I think I had, well, yeah, I only had one. But it was a very long one. So there you have it. I'll just show you my setup before I pack it away. Well, here's my setup. Here's my telescope here. Got a uh, little tripod there. Got my audio recorder on the tripod. Got my iPhone attached to the leg of the tripod. That's uh, showing the time. And there's a wire connecting that to the recorder. So it's recording that signal directly through the wire. And then the beeper box is also running. So I've got actually two time sources. Well, there you have it. Now I've got to pack up. We'll go back to the meeting place. Well, Steve's to yeah. scope. Steve's. Yeah, that, that guy's scope there. Steve's. Took a tumble. It did take a tumble. That, that's Ooh. not good. But anyway, it's probably okay. So this scope fell off. It, 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 uh, yeah, it wasn't properly mounted on the mount. The dovetail wasn't in place. I thought it was. I even actually looked underneath because I've had it really come off my hands before. Yeah, uh, it you, was looked in there. I do You know, all this is going on. I saw it being recorded for Funniest Home Videos. Excellent. <laughs> right, I thought it might be. Bloody kangaroo.